but uh, last time it took an hour by the shuttle. And to give you uh, an idea, it's, it's, it's only, it's less than three miles to the convention center. And it took an hour to get there. So we decided to skip the shuttle and to walk. So I'm probably gonna be a sweaty mess by the time we get there, but that's okay. Got an old steam engine and pirate ships. And all I could think about was Brooke from By the Brooks, 1920s vampire story, and Kate Cavanaugh's current sequel, Work in Progress. It's about pirates. Look, you guys, you got two ships right next to each other. Aww. Hey, listen to me. The boys is everywhere. The bus and the buildings. Yay! We did not have to wait in line for the Her Universe fashion show. They gave us these wristbands with numbers on them so we get to come back at like five o'clock which is really nice because we were planning on waiting in line for like six hours. So anyway we're tired. Put me hurt. My shins hurt. I really hurt. But I'm so excited because now we actually have all this extra time and we're going to shop. Yay! I can't get too much though because I live in an RV but you know. actually even got teary-eyed because I know the two girls that won have been I think in every single show since it started and they've just produced amazing amazing dresses every year and one won the judges award and the other won the audience award it was really it was the it was a really good moment so we had a really awesome time this is the dress I realized I never actually got to show you guys and I wear the Doctor Who boots with it but they hurt my feet so bad that uh, <laughs> I took them off and bought I took them off and bought flip-flops but this is it on you guys saw it hanging up but it's a full circle um, I even brought the sonic screwdriver which is now in my backpack but 
At least you get to see this. <laughs> I'm going to bed now. Today is day. It's today two. 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 Oh, God, oh God. Okay, so we're waiting in ballroom 20 line. If that makes any sense to you. For Veronica Mars and the boys. <coughs> It's, uh, we're hoping we get in. You never know. There's a lot of people, but we got here really early. We woke up at like six, and uh, we got here around seven, I guess. So, the panel's not till 11.30. That's what Comic-Con is. Limes, limes. And you still are not guaranteed to get in. We're walking, walking, walking. And we're stopping, stopping, stopping. I think we're gonna make it. I think we're gonna make it. We're moving fast now and they're letting people in. Hi, uh, my question is for Kristen. Even if Veronica is not ready to be married yet, hypothetically, given the choice between Duncan, Leo, and his date, Mary kill. Fun, crazy, wacky, fun journey that, uh, that has a whole lot of twists and turns. And uh, but ultimately, you know, there's this incredible sort of relationship that forms between these two characters who are like chalk and cheese. And uh, this is just a little bit of fun. It's not an American. It's not an American. Chalk and cheese. Chalk and cheese. Is that not something that you can't go to the United States forever? But I. Bang on, mate. It is still understand how chalk and cheese is. Is that just a New Zealand thing, Tony? It's perfectly fine. What you did was not a foul. Everyone else would be quiet. They're like, oh, that's a cool idea. And they bought it, and then they hired Adam McKay to make it into a movie. And then that never happened. It just kind of wasn't right for that. It was something that we always just chased and we we're just kind of kept raising our hand every few years and then many 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 years later after i'm sure they exhausted every more reasonable option uh, <laughs> they found us they found us and we were like hey uh and we yeah you know garth uh, and us worked very well the other one preacher and continue to and um uh, you know it's hard to it's hard to look someone who makes shit this crazy in the eye and be like, you'll like the show, you'll like it. Like, I promise, we'll, we'll, we'll do justice to all the insanity that you, like, for some weird reason, you thought of in your head. Um, and, uh, and I felt like we could actually do that and be honest, um, and that was the reason that we, that we tried to do it. The deeper we explored first the pilot and then the season, the, way, the more we sort of realized it was kind of the perfect show to describe the current moment that we're living in.
are exhausted, my feet hurt, I have shin splints, it's um, getting old. <laughs> we are taking it easy, and then we are getting up early to go to the Supernatural panel. And we're hoping we get in, because it's the last panel. I mean, technically they may have a, like a goodbye panel next year, but this is the last panel before the final season. So that, if my sister would stop going through her bag, that, just let me finish for two seconds. So that's it, and wish us luck, because I am signing off for the evening. Say hi, Julie. How'd you think? Uh, so we're in line for Supernatural, and we got the Hall H So we're guaranteed to go in, so we don't have to worry about it. Now we just have to wait in line for, I don't know, three hours, a couple hours. The, the panel's at 10.30 and I think it's 6.30. But we did it, we got in. We got in and we got these cute little Impala cars. Yay! It's a back house! Oh my God, this is the back. <laughs> as you can see, we're dressed as our, as homage to the show, Andy, we're dressing as our favorite characters from Supernatural. <laughs> right, Rob, we're, uh, we're cosplaying Sam and Dean in the rain. I don't think I've ever been nervous, and now I'm nervous, and I don't know why. Um, but it feels good to feel something. <laughs> Do it again? Okay. <laughs> that. No. I, I, when I got on the show, I, I just recently found a gold card. It's these three by five note cards that I write around New Year's. It's really nerdy, but it's like, here are my goals for the year. And the year before I got on Supernatural, I had written this goal of, I, I'm, a, I'm a regular on a show that is creatively fulfilling, and, uh, and I become lifelong friends with my castmates. <laughs> and I, um, I have found this show to be, I mean, I, I just came across that and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe that I wrote that and I can't believe that this has come to pass. I consider these guys lifelong friends and you guys lifelong friends. And I know that none of you like me, but <laughs> <laughs> we're all backstage uh, promising each other that we weren't gonna cry and we all knew that we were lying to each other. <laughs> um, just love you guys. Love you guys. Thank you. Yeah, guys, th uh, th thanks for showing up, you know? Because without you, we wouldn't be here. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing to see. This many faces who, who appreciate what we do. Uh, Mr. Brad Buckner, Ms. Eugenie Ross Lemming, Bob Singer, Andrew Dabb, and please, a round of applause for our cast, Alex Calvert, Misha Collins, Comic-Con and I had an amazing time. It's, I think it was like the first Comic-Con where I actually got into everything I planned on trying to get into, which is actually pretty rare. <laughs> you know, waiting in line, you just never know if you're gonna get in or not, but man, 
we did. It was great. I say the highlight of the whole thing was the fact that my husband's been working on the show, The Boys, that's coming out, I guess, on Friday. And I mean, blood, sweat, and tears, hours and hours and hours of work. And to go to Comic-Con and see it, all the posters and advertisements on buildings, on buses, on trains, in the center, like every, it was amazing. And then to see the first two episodes with a live audience outside with all of Comic-Con around us, it was, it was by far the best Comic-Con I've ever had. And I've been going for 12 years, even better Comic-Con if Stefan would have been able to go. It would have been really nice for him to, to see all the stuff around and just to see the show that he's been working so hard on. So I do, I do wish he had been with me, but it, it, I was sending him lots of videos and, and photos, so <laughs> he was very excited. Oh, and the reason why he couldn't go is because he's working on season two of The Voice. <laughs> The one thing I love about Comic-Con is that I, every, every other day of the year, I am the classic definition of an introvert, introvert hermit. I don't really leave my apartment that much. I just don't. I'm usually writing, sewing, or drawing. I just, I, I'm very shy. Um, it's very hard for me to talk to people. But at Comic-Con, I just change. I'll I'll start conversations just with random people. Like we'll be waiting in line. It's like this bond. We have this like nerd bond where we're here to celebrate all the things that we love, books and TV and movies. And it's just so magical. And, and I just come out of my shell. So I think that's kind of why I love Comic-Con so much. Like I have no fear talking to strangers because I have terror whenever talking to strangers, even like a clerk when I'm going to a store. I don't know why. I just get really, really shy. And for some reason at Comic-Con, I'm just so excited to be there. I, I don't care. I'll just start a conversation. We'll be waiting in line because usually you're waiting in line for a lot. So waiting in line and you just start talking about what you're waiting in line for. And I don't know. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me. And I have to get back to camp now. <laughs> I really have to get back into that mindset. Ah, uh, okay.